Mr. Jones was transferred to an inpatient drug and alcohol rehab from a homeless shelter for opioid addiction. He arrived at the homeless shelter after losing his job. An interprofessional team diagnosed him with opioid addiction, depression, and diabetes. He was doing well in his rehab program until today when he started acting strangely in group therapy, slurring his speech. He also was disoriented and sweaty. So I'm really concerned that Mr. Jones may be using again. You're in close contact with him almost every day. Have you noticed anything peculiar? No. He came to me complaining of a headache and he had some dizziness, but he seemed fine. I knew it. Classic drug-seeking behavior here. Now hold on a minute. I gave him a Tylenol. He didn't push me for anything more. Mr. Joan has been committed to his sobriety. Let's slow down and try to get to the We see it. this all the time. Why are you being so naive? I know you like Mr. Jones. I know you're rooting for him. We, we all are, but come on, read the writing on the wall. That is the second time you interrupted me. I don't even know how your patients get a word in edgewise. And you're right, I do like Mr. Jones, but even if I didn't, I would be trying to get to the bottom of this. He's diabetic. Hypoglycemia causes disorientation, headaches, dizziness, sweatiness. I'm sorry, I should not have interrupted you. But I get so frustrated when our patients relapse, particularly the ones that are doing so well. I know how hard this is. Now let's just go find Mr. Jones and see that he's okay and check his blood sugar and see if he needs any juice. Mr. Jones' blood sugar was checked and shown to be somewhat low. The nurse and psychologist give Mr. Jones some juice and he recovers. The nurse rechecks Mr. Jones' blood sugar 15 minutes later and it is normal. He ascertains that Mr. Jones ate his normal breakfast. The nurse decides to meet with the pharmacist and physician to see if there has been a change in Mr. Jones' medication. Okay, let me just check and see if Mr. Jones' glipizide dose was increased. Maybe that's the cause for his low blood sugar. I didn't change his glipizide dose. We should check to make sure it wasn't dispensed or administered incorrectly. Okay, well, let me just make sure of the instructions. I'm going to pull the original order and compare that to what's in the system. Does anybody know if he's get breakfast today? He claims he ate the same breakfast as he eats every day, oatmeal, toast, and coffee. But let me just grab the blister pack of glipizide and just to be sure that the medication was dispensed correctly. Okay, thank you. The nurse returns with the medication from the floor. The pharmacist has found the original prescription and compares it to the directions and the medication that was dispensed. She finds that the wrong dose was administered, but the increase was within normal parameters. She pages the doctor, but he fails to respond until after three pages and 30 minutes. Okay, I'm here, what's up? We need to have a meeting as soon as possible to figure out how this medication error occurred. His blood sugar was well controlled on the previous dose. That's the reason for all these pages. This is not an urgent matter. Okay, I'll see what I can do. I know we're all very busy, but let's try to keep this quick and focused. Well, maybe that's the problem. We're all so busy and we're understaffed. Perhaps this error never would have occurred if we were better staffed and less busy. I'm sorry. I know we are just trying to learn from this error. I've participated in many root cause analysis teams, and I do understand the role system factors play in uh, medication errors and ensuring patient safety. Yeah, and in this particular case, the error resulted in a dose that was within normal limits, but I still think it's really important that we get to the root cause and figure out what happened. Um, we do have a number of new medication error protocols in place as well. I agree. However, we also need to inform the patient. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Agreed. Okay. Patient is Mr. Robert Jones, born January 7th, 1956. Wait, 
I have Robert Jones born January 12th, 1956. I think I see what happened here. The team continues to review the patient chart, orders, and care provided for this patient over the duration of his hospital stay. It appears that there was not one, but many causes to this event. Well, we have all learned a lot today, and I am so happy that Mr. Jones is going to be okay. Me too. We have a new protocol that requires that we report the error to the quality officer, and so I'll take responsibility for putting that report together. I'll also make it part of the protocol that we write the birth date clearly at the top of every new prescription order. And when there's a question, we'll make sure that that conversation starts with a verification of the date of birth. Does that sound good? Yes. Yes. Great.